Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning everyone For the 8th International Conference on Sustainable Agriculture and Environment Held in Surakarta, Indonesia The 25th August 2020 We are here Deden Dani Saleh From Sekolah Tinggi Pertanahan Nasional Yogyakarta Province And myself Asal Wahyuni Erli Mulyadi from Universitas 11 Maret Surakarta, Central Java Province. Nikolaus Powell Reresi from the District Government of Kepulauan Tanimbar, Maluku Province. Junaidi from Universitas Sriwijaya Palembang, South Sumatra Province. And Dwi Wulan Pujiriani from Sekolah Tinggi Pertanahan Nasional, Yogyakarta Province, would like to present our paper, Horizontalism in the Implementation of Land Reform Policy in Cipari, Cilacap. We divided our presentation into five parts, Introduction, Research Objective, Methods, Result and discussion and conclusion. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Junaidi. I will present for the introduction part. More than two decades after the 1998 tragedy, the public policy process in Indonesia is in horizontal cycles. A situation indicated by the various opportunities for non-state actors to participate in the work policies. Empirically, the involvement of the non-state actor in policy process land redistribution in the post-reformation era in Indonesia is massive. In the last 10 years, the unit of analysis for land reform policy studies span from perception of land rights, target group behavior, the interaction of the state and society, legal framework, community movement, legal and economic instrument, supporting policies, policy performance, policy impact, Community Ownership to Policy Concept The research objective is to describe non-state actors' involvement in the policy implementation of land redistribution in Cipari District, Cilacap Regency, Central Java. Land redistribution is a redistribution of state lands to society. In practice, since many stakeholders are involved, this program land requires a long and a complicated process as it took about two regimes. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Nikolaus Powell Rezi. I will explain about the research method. This study implements a qualitative approach relying on the constructivism paradigm to explore and understand the practice of land redistribution programs in Cipari, Cilacap, Central Java. The primary data consists of all field notes, audio and visual documentation derived from the interviews and observation during the study. The key informants consist of the state actors, the non-state actors, and the beneficiaries. The secondary data consists of all related documents examined and reviewed to support the data collection and analysis. The researchers apply a case study strategy to allow an in-depth analysis of the study focus. The data analysis of the study implements a thematic analysis. Next, we will see the explanation of the findings of this study, which consists of three main points, 
as follows the non-state actor in the policy of land reform, the dominant role of SLPs as the state actors, and horizontalism, the non-state actor is giving up. Hello everyone, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Deden Dani Saleh. Please allow me to continue the presentation. The existence of non-state actors will now cannot be separate from the condition and situation they experienced in the past. These actors used to be ordinary citizens who clear forest land for their livelihood. The name for them is Truka. They also use this land with the permission of the government. The name of this is Yellow Letter. Uh, several moments after the proclamation of independence, the Indonesian government has a policy of nationalizing private plantation. Many lands belonging to the community were also included in the nationalization policy. By doing various ways, the residents tried to get back the lands they had worked on, and the residents finally got land ownership right. This condition occurs when they begin to organize themselves. At that time, we could get to know Katan Banci, Tapungan Bangkit, and Mangkubumi, and others' organization. The actual task of this organization is to distribute land to landowners who have been struggled for a long time. This decision is closer to the concept of improving the structure of land ownership. This condition answers several things that were conveyed by Pratikno in 2008. This condition proving that in land sector, the involvement of non-state actors had been going on long before the reform era. It is also proof again that in a horizontal situation, the implementation of policy was not easy to implement. After successfully fighting for land ownership rights, it is the turn of non-state actors to distribute land. The opponents they faced this time were lower level bureaucrats. This section will discuss lower level bureaucrats in the constellation of policy horizontalism. In the land distribution policy, the lower level bureaucrats are the village heads. They have a mandate from the bureaucrats above them. That's why he has a dominant role. When the implementation encounter a problem by mobilizing all the capabilities of its resource, this bureaucrat is able to overcome it. That is why the already dominant role has become more and more dominant. Now, the horizontalism, the non-state actor is giving up. Very solid and massive activities such as demonstration, conveying opinion, forming a supporting organizations uh, among the concrete involvements of the non actors in, the, in this policy process. And the target or the, the objective of the land redistribution in Cipari, Cilacap uh, finally reached the expectation after a long fight of this negotiation. So the horizontal, the practice of horizontalism here is a negotiable relationship between the street level bureaucrats, uh, the SLBs, and the local farmers organization, implementing a distributive negotiation approach. And here in the process, the SLBs is the winner. And in terms of policy objective, this result was not as expected. As a conclusion, we divide it into three parts. First is that horizontalism in the land policy sector process, specifically in implementing the land redistribution program, has been implemented for a quite a long time. Second, in terms of policy success, this horizontal situation has contributed to the successful implementation of the policy. And the third, Due to the success of distributive negotiation in a horizontal situation, at the implementation level, the policy has failed as it doesn't reach the goal of structuring inequality. That's all for our presentation. Thank you for your kind attention and hope to see you all in another event.
Thank you and salam sehat. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.